Hello friends, welcome to Sandeep's Biology. So in this video, I'll be talking about regulation of glycolysis process. I have already made a video about the process of glycolysis. Let's see about the regulation of glycolysis in this video. So I hope you know all the steps of glycolysis. So there are three irreversible steps in the process of glycolysis and those enzymes which are catalyzing these irreversible steps are regulated. So let's see the regulation. First is glucose is converted into glucose 6-phosphate and this is irreversible step and this irreversible step is catalyzed by an enzyme called hexokinase. So hexokinase catalyze this irreversible step. Now this glucose 6-phosphate is interconverted into fructose 6-phosphate and it is reversible step. So it is converted into fructose 6-phosphate. Now again next step is irreversible. So this fructose 6-phosphate is converted into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate and it is irreversible step. So fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is produced from this fructose 6-phosphate and the enzyme catalyzing this irreversible step is phosphofructokinase. So enzyme is known as phosphofructokinase. Right? Now this fructose 1,6-bisphosphate by the series of reactions, series of different reactions is converted into phosphoenolpyruvate. And phosphoenolpyruvate is finally converted into pyruvate. And of course this step is irreversible. So the enzyme used here is pyruvate kinase. So as I mentioned earlier there are three irreversible steps catalyzing by three different enzymes. One is exokinase, another is phosphofructokinase and pyruvate kinase. And these three enzymes are regulated and they regulate all process of glycolysis. So let's see regulation of these enzymes one by one. Now exokinase is regulated by so when there is higher concentration of glucose 6-phosphate inside the cell, it inhibits. So it inhibits hexokinase by feedback regulation. So by feedback regulation, glucose 6-phosphate regulate the exokinase enzymes. So whenever there is high concentration of glucose 6-phosphate inside a cell, it means that there are enough glucose 6-phosphate molecules to carry on the process of glycolysis. So there is no need to make more glucose 6-phosphate, right? So hexokinase enzyme is inhibited. So through the feedback regulation, this hexokinase enzyme is regulated. Now next enzyme which is regulated is phosphofructokinase. So phosphofructokinase is an allosteric enzyme. So let's see about what is an allosteric enzyme. So allosteric enzyme have enzymes have two site. At one site substrate binds. So at this site substrate binds and there is one more site right this is active site and this is allosteric site here 
allosteric effect turbines so allosteric effectors effect turbine here and there are two kinds of allosteric effector one that is allosteric activator and another is allosteric inhibitor so when inhibitor binds to this allosteric site of this enzyme it inhibits the enzyme and when activator binds to this allosteric site it activates the enzyme so phosphofructokinase is allosterically regulated so let's see about it so higher concentration of ATP citrate and H plus ion inhibits these phosphofructokinase enzyme so whenever there is high concentration of ATP inside the cell it means that there is enough energy there is no need to carry out this process right enough ATPs are there so this enzyme is through the allosteric inhibitor so ATP acts as allosteric inhibitor and it inhibits this phosphofructokinase enzyme right phosphofructokinase enzyme again citrate is allosteric inhibitor so citrate is intermediate in Krebs cycle so it means that if cell has enough citrate it means that there is enough citrate to carry on the Krebs cycle so there is no need to further carry forward this reaction and H plus ion is produced as an intermediate in glycolysis like NADH and H plus is produced so high concentration of H plus ions acts as allosteric inhibitor so it inhibits phosphofructokinase enzymes now there are several activators allosteric activators so let's see which are those so high concentration of ADP AMP and inorganic phosphate allosterically activates these phosphofructokinase enzymes right so high concentration of ADP and AMP inside the cell it means that cell needs energy right so these ADP and AMP has to be converted into ATP so this process has to be carried forward so these are allosteric activators so high concentration of ADP AMP and inorganic phosphate carry forward this reaction so it activates phosphofructokinase and there is one more allosteric activators which is fructose 2,6-bisphosphate so fructose 2 6 bisphosphate acts as allosteric activators for the phosphofructokinase enzyme right so these are uh, allosteric activators and these three are allosteric inhibitors now the third irreversible step is catalyzed by pyruvate kinase enzyme so let's see regulation of pyruvate kinase enzyme so pyruvate kinase is inhibited by the higher concentration of ATP so if ATP is in higher concentration inside the cell it means that there is enough energy inside the cell there is no need to produce further ATP right then LA9 inhibits the pyruvate kinase enzyme and pyruvate kinase is also inhibited by the action of glucagon so glucagon through CMP dependent protein kinase so this CMP dependent protein kinase phosphorylate is pyruvate kinase enzyme and in phosphorylate state it is inactive so glucagon by the process of cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase this CMP dependent protein kinase phosphorylate pyruvate kinase enzyme and in phosphorylate state pyruvate kinase enzyme is inactive so it is active in the phosphorylate state and it is inactive in phosphorylate state so glucagon inhibits pyruvate kinase enzyme by these 
reactions by this method and there are of course several activators so fructose 1 6 bisphosphate fructose 1 6 bisphosphate activates this pyruvate kinase enzyme so if there is more concentration of or higher concentration of fructose 1 6 bisphosphate it means that this reaction has to be carried forward right and this step which is catalyzed by phosphofructokinase enzyme is rate limiting step so this step is rate limiting step it means that this step determines the rate of wall glycolysis process if this step is occurring at a slow speed the wall glycolysis process occurs at slow speed and if the rate of this uh, step is fast so the whole process will occur at higher rate or higher speed so that is rate limiting step so there is three enzymes there are three enzymes which are regulated and there is one more thing about the regulation that 2 phosphoglycerate is converted into phosphoenol pyruvate and the enzyme catalyzing this reaction is enolase now the enolase enzyme is inhibited by fluoride so it is inhibited by fluoride so when the lactic acid fermenting bacteria grows inside the cavities of teeth right so action of fluoride fluoride is present in toothpaste so action of fluoride inhibits the anaerobic glycolysis in the bacteria that is residing in the oral cavities so fluoride inhibits the enolase enzyme and by this inhibition the whole anaerobic glycolysis process is inhibited and this by this way fluoride helps to protect teeth from the attack of different bacteria. so that is about the regulation of glycolysis i hope this video is helpful if you are watching this video till here please hit the like button share this video with your friends subscribe to my channel thank you for watching